Welcome to Sales Velocity TV, where we pull back the curtain on how the top businesses in the world sell more with less resistance. Bringing over 50 plus years of combined sales experience and over 100 million in revenue generated, please welcome the hosts of Sales Velocity TV and two incredibly entertaining gentlemen, Andrew Cass and Aaron Parkinson. Hey, everybody, welcome back. We're talking about information versus the selling of products and services today. It's a big topic that Aaron and I come back to quite a bit because yet, Aaron, I'm still not seeing a lot of businesses adopting the information marketing empire approach, which we're going to talk about here today. I feel like a lot of business owners are struggling, still trying to just shove products and services down people's throats, and there is an easier way. We talk a lot about selling with less resistance on this show and this is a this is a big way to do it. Selling information, or really, I should say, the marketing of information, creates such a frictionless sales process. So we're going to dive into what the heck we mean by selling information versus selling products and services. How are you, buddy? I'm doing amazing. And and when you said we were going to talk about this today, I was like, oh man, we could talk about this all day long. I mean, the the amount of clients that we work with that we help them craft these information first approaches we've been doing this for shoot 20 years oh yeah and and to us i think it seems like the obvious thing to do but for a lot of people they're, they're still not really exposed to the power of it and so i think it's good that we're coming back to it today and i think for me i would kick it off and i, I try to explain this to people in a way that they could understand and in a, in a real life example right so imagine let, give, give me any random business get give, give me just choose like one. First like one that, industry? Yeah, get, first one that comes to your Let's head. Let's call it a financial planning firm as okay. an example. Financial planning firm. So we'll go there. So imagine you go to a party and everybody's grabbing a, a glass of champagne and they're introducing themselves and, and all that stuff. And, and you meet a new person and you've never met this person before. And they say, what do you do? And what do you do? And you say... I'm a, fin a financial planner. Do you want me to manage your money? How well is that conversation going to go? It's like this. Poof, guard up. Yeah, boom, yep. right? Versus actually introducing yourself, introducing some interesting topics around your space. You know, for, and I'll give you an example. You know, I've got this, this client right now that helps people dramatically reduce their taxes, right? And, and he's basically got this, this three-step strategy that helps you dramatically reduce your taxes, right? So rather than saying, I'm a, a financial planner, do you want me to invest, you know, do, do you want to invest money in that example, right? Right. It, it, he turns around and says, I help people reduce their taxes. I, so let me back up a step. I help people who, who pay at least $100,000 a year in taxes reduce that taxable amount by at least 80% through a three-step process that we've developed. Perfect. Whole Ele elevator pitch, unique selling proposition, interest. Now, somebody says that to me, I go, hold on a second. <laughs> You're interested. What'd you just say? Yeah, I work with clients all over the world. Most people these days, they have no idea about how to properly set up, you know, structures and how to properly you know, navigate the IRS system and how to do this and how to do this. And we've developed this three-step process and our average client in a year saves about $300,000 in taxes legally and, and you know, with, with no risk and no drama with things that they just didn't even know existed. I'm going to go, tell me, I'm going to say, how, tell me more. Can we connect next week? Can we or, hop on a call? Do you right. have a card? All the buying signals now come out. Right. But let me let me stop you for a minute, Aaron. Okay. What you just did right there is you did an information pitch, not a products and services pitch. Perfect. Correct. Now that's easy to do verbally. Elevator pitch, USP. We just did it. It, it and it's important to craft that message, by the way, for your mm -hmm. business. Once somebody says, "What do you do?" What you just did right there that, that makes a lot of sense to spin it into a benefit-driven answer and not a products and services answer. Now, right. the challenging part is to pivot that into an entire marketing system online, which is what we're going to talk about here today. That's the tricky part with a sales funnel and an information-rich offer, free report, book, webinar, demo, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. That's the lift. How do you now pivot that message into a system? 
Yeah, and I think it, it starts with understanding the difference between the two and why. And, and the why is that when you just lead with your product or service, people feel cornered by what you're jamming in their face. They don't feel like there's any relationship established. There's no trust. There's no credibility. There's, there's no give. There's only ask. Mm. And, and I think anytime somebody's ever come to you with an ask, if they've started with a gift first, a give first, Frank Kern uses this, this term all the time. He says it establishes a sense of reciprocity. Mm. As humans, we're designed to want to give back if somebody gives something to us. And so when you're leading with information, and that can start all the way from an ad to a conversation to a presentation where somebody feels like, man, I'm getting so much value from this. There's so many things I'm learning that I was unaware of. And then at the end of that process, you say, hey, like you can go and take this information and, and do some research and try to do it yourself or you could do it with me and my team and here's why my team is so great at being able to execute this for you and now it's credibility, testimonials, case studies, la, 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 la. The, 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 the prospect doesn't feel cornered by you just jamming the product and service in the face. They're like, man, I really like this person. I value the information they give me. I feel the sense of reciprocity. I feel attracted to them. And, and I feel like this could be a good partnership for what is the ultimate item that I want to execute on. If we even look at this show, the amount of people that come to us for products and services later on down the line that say, hey, I watched three of your shows, five of your shows. Happens I binge all the time. I binge watched your shows. You clearly know what you're talking about. I got a ton of value from what you were saying. I know that you're the person I want to work with. Imagine the difference in the friction of that conversation versus, for example, I see, you know, as we know, I have an agency, right? I see this other agency that runs these ads all the time. And all it says is, do you want us to run your ads? And there's a picture of them. And I'm like, man. Jump on our calendar. Let's do a strategy call. I, I can't even imagine the pain of what those strategy sessions look like. Cause now it's all on me to start from scratch and tell my story, build my credibility, connect with the prospect like that. That could take hours, could take days. That's if that's if you even get appointments, Aaron. I mean, if you're not <laughs> going to take that, that's lazy by the way, if you're not going to take the time to provide information, credibility, third party validation, all the things value. we talk about here, value testimonials, and just say book on my calendar. I mean, come on, right? You have to unpack this and really almost take two, two or three steps back if you want to take five steps forward and figure out a way to warm up a prospect with value and information. We'll talk about some of the mechanisms that can be used here today, but you nailed it. And, and I think the other part to your point, Aaron, is this is about clarity, right? In your example before, if you were to consult the accountant in that example, the first thing we always want to do is help somebody get really clear on what they offer. There's right. so much fuzziness around what, <laughs> shockingly, people are very confused about what they even do in a lot of cases. The clarity comes first. Verbally, strategically articulating what it is that you do makes it a lot easier to then pivot and convert that into a sales funnel, a sales letter, a webinar. But you have to start with being really clear on what you offer. What is that benefit? What is that hook? In your accounting example, it was perfect. We help people who are paying over $100,000 a year in taxes do fill in the blank, right? right? Perfect. That's your starting point. Your starting point is just getting that elevator pitch and that USP down verbally where you could be prepared to unload an answer on someone who next time says, what do you do for a living? That is the starting point of it all. It's that simple. It's a verbal understanding and a, and a great clarity of what it is that you offer as the ultimate end result benefit in your company with your product, with your service. Now, once you know that, it's like, wow, now that I figured that part out, 
Maybe I can convert this into a 10-page report or a 20-minute webinar or a 60-minute webinar or a demo of my product and service. Or a live event. Or a live event or, or a, a survey funnel or a, an online virtual seminar. There's so many mechanisms that can happen. Now, we'll never build a funnel, Aaron, without having some sort of video presentation, a.k.a. webinar, mini video presentation, mini, mini video sales letter or, or some sort of free report. We'll never build a funnel. Without that, we would never build a funnel or advise on a funnel that just says, here's what I sell and here's what I do and hop on my calendar if you want to learn more. That is so lazy. We could do it all day long. I could, we could produce funnels like that all day long and cut our workload in half, but it would be totally ineffective and totally out of integrity. Nothing like that works today. Well, the internet is a sea of madness. It's, it's, it's a black hole. You have to stand out today and you have to be willing to exchange value first before someone is going to decide to meet with you. And very and, few do it still, shockingly, and it's right there for the taking. Well, and I laugh because there's there's a, another agency that I, I see their ads all the time. And they're basically throwing stones at competitors. And they're saying, like, you shouldn't have to pay this much for appointments. You, you know, we can make sure you have 50 appointments booked per week. And here's our system and whatever. And they've put together this system that's ex extremely vague where it's like, hey, you know, Offer, big benefit, book on the calendar, done through a messenger integration, calendar's full, yeah, yeah. And they're just showing business owners, like, look how many look how many appointments we can get booked. And, and as a business owner, you get all excited, right? Like, oh, my God, imagine if my calendar was booked 24 All you're thinking about is appointments. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. Now, when you actually realize what they're doing, these people have very little information. They don't know who you are. They don't really know what you do. They only did it because it was in their face to scratch an itch. And now you've got a you got to sift through a hundred appointments a week to even find somebody that you probably want to work with. Your no show rate is off the chart oh gosh, because there yeah. was no education, there was no commitment, there was no anything. And you're just and every third, you know, maybe every sixth person you're talking to is an ideal client for you, and the rest you're like, oh my god, you have no money, you're in the wrong <laughs> industry, you're. You're, you you have a low IQ, like wh whatever, it's just pain. And the it's call just... goes something like this at the opening, Aaron. What, what did I fill out online? Oh, Who oh, are you? I... Wait, why are you calling me? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, listen, I've been around a long time. I know what it's like to buy leads from the internet for the mortgage industry, for the financial services industry, for financial planning, coaching and consulting, personal trainers. There are companies that generate leads online and sell those leads but the disconnect is those are those are those are basically lead gen broker mills yep right it sounds cool oh for seven dollars a lead i can buy a pack of 100 awesome that's quick done write a check and now i got leads coming in Max like paint. sounds like the easy button sounds amazing on the surface but remember all of the things we just talked about, by the time you get to them, you're at less than zero. You're not even starting from zero. You're starting from less than zero because they didn't come through your channels. They didn't see you. They don't know you. They're not watching a show like this. They didn't read your report. They don't know about your book. If you have any of these things, by the way, you need them. And we'll talk about that in a second. So the warm-up process doesn't exist. So you're like beyond, you're less than a cold call. You're, you're a negative cold call. So you, you, you have to come from less than zero just to get the rapport and the conversation to where it needs to go. Not good. The work that you do now to get an information-rich offer, again, webinar, free report, video sales letter, whatever, demo, the work you do now to get that in place will save you endless amounts of friction later. We'll talk about some of the things that are working well online today here in a little bit, but I'm glad we're unpacking the psychology of it first because still a lot of business owners don't really – they don't really understand this and they don't think that the industry they're in or the business they're in warrants doing this. And I don't know of too many industries, Aaron, where you could make the argument that having an information lead, I call it a flagship offer, by the way, book, free report, video presentation, webinar, online seminar, event, show, something that people can say, okay, I understand what they do. It makes sense. It's resonating with me. They wrote the report on this. They did the presentation on this. They've crafted the email marketing campaigns to follow up with me. Like there's a system for educating and warming someone up. 
most prospects are very impressed by that, even if it's unconscious. They say, wow, they're really eyes dotted, T's crossed. This is the kind of person that I could let my guard down for and maybe mm-hmm. listen to what they want to say next. But if you don't do this work in the beginning and build this information rich, you know, this education based rich offer, it's going to be really difficult to get the right prospects today and to sell anything substantial. And I think the one more thing that I would add to that, as far as your your benefits are concerned around this, is that the the amount of ads that people have been shown this decade versus last decade versus the decade before, mm-hmm. the amount of distractions yep. from technology, for example, this decade, last decade, the notifications, the apps, the emails, the out of control. It it, it has gone up so dramatically that the attention span has become so minimal that if you just come out and show somebody a whole bunch of information, you know, like the example we use is always like a corporate website, you know, where you've got home and about us and, and contact us and blog and publications and FAQs. And, you know, I, I literally pull that kind of thing up when I'm, when I'm looking when I'm first searching somebody, I look it up and my brain goes, Nope, too busy, not interested. And I'm gone versus crafting a really compelling value-based presentation will hold somebody's attention for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, right? And, and that is such an advantage when you're trying to get somebody to move through your process because they're pulled in so many different directions. That's right. right. And by the way, this is, we've, loop back to this many times. This is what is considered a direct response marketing offer, meaning there's one direct path, one thing, one benefit, <clears throat> one free report, not a site map with a million things on it. This is AKA the sales funnel. It's a direct path to see something that is of benefit to that prospect or mainly to solve a problem, show somebody a way out of their pain. Mm-hmm. This is what works. To, you don't have a choice to go this route today because of what you just said, Aaron. Otherwise, you're a website, you're a giant brochure online, you have a, 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 a seven-step site map, and people go to your site, get lost and distracted, and they're gone. But if you give them that one thing, it's almost a straight-line approach, right? You give them that one thing, you, that, that, like you, the accounting example a second ago was, if we could show you in three steps how to save $200,000 plus per year in taxes, if you're already paying over $100,000 a year, that could all be crafted into a demonstration could be a 15 minute video demo and they sign in you have an email and a name they watch it then underneath they can book with you to learn more and see how that can be implemented for them we that's the only kind of funnel we build 10 a week uh, within our group and that's always the formula every single time i'm working with a, a client right now who is an advisor to attorneys Okay. And what he mainly focuses on, on, Aaron, is helping attorneys maximize their CRM, right? Okay. This is an area that he's good at. So he'll go to a lawyer and say, okay, most likely you're utilizing, this is most people, most likely you're utilizing, and I've helped them through this, this language here, uh, most likely you're utilizing like 20 to 30% of your CRM. And if you could utilize 80% of it, you'd make way more sales and you'd, be, you'd have way more automation and great follow-up and probably have way more deal flow, right? I think most people, they're not maximizing technology like they can be, right? Sure. So he'll go to a, so, so the, the, the advice I gave him was you want to craft about a 15 to 20 minute video showing what you've done for a client to help them utilize 80% of their technology, their CRM versus the 20% that most people are using and then show we did this, we added email, we added text, we added this, we added pipelines, we added this. We added, and they're looking at it going, oh my God, we need that. They did right. all that for that client and they took him from 100,000 a year to 800,000 a year, whatever that path is. That's, that's a phenomenal information-based offer. And by the way, everyone has that. There's no doubt you have a client or two that you've had a huge win with that you could simply show the before and after of what you did inside of a process that you have and rinse and repeat all day long, day in and day out. That's, and then, that's the key. And then show them how it's going to impact. Like what is the outcome that's going to be derived from what, this? What it, could it, your firm look like in two years from now right. if this is like happening? 
what what is the problem right now and what could this solve and what could that mean? How does that tie to hours or efficiency or revenue or profit or mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera? And we actually have a client that's very similar right now to what you're saying. He's a brain surgeon. Really? And he's developed a, um, a software mm -hmm. and an app. Okay. So the app, the client can download all of their medical history and have it encrypted in an app, including their kids. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole, but vaccination <laughs> records, you know, blah, 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 blah. Sounds all amazing. Working, Surveillance. Right? And, and it's all in a QR code. So you don't have to have Wi-Fi. You don't have to have cellular. You don't have to have anything. Right. Right. And they can come in and they can scan it when they get to the doctor's office and boom, all the information's in the doctor's system. Now, why this matters for the doctor is the amount of people that come in that have to fill out forms or they're new patients and they get delayed. And then all of a sudden the patients are delayed, 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 delayed throughout the day from all of this stupid paperwork filling out. The efficiency of seeing patients goes down by something like 20%. And worse, when they don't fill out the information right, they can't collect at the top tier of insurance. Mm -hmm. So this software that they have directly shows doctors that the average doctor using this software makes a quarter million dollars a year more because of efficiency and because of the top tier insurance that they can charge them. Now you show, you show that to a doctor in a presentation and you say, hey, this thing's 15 grand. The doctor goes, where do I send my money? Demonstration. Instant is key demonstration, right? That so, would, so software and tech is, is, is perfect for a demo. Exactly. And seeing and a demo with, is the information and you lead with the problem. Hey right. doctors, have you experienced, you know, this issue when people come in to fill paperwork, have you experienced this issue when you're trying to send it over to insurance and you're stuck in level one instead of level five? Are you tired of this round and round and round and round and round? What if there was an all-in-one solution can, can eliminate all of this, increase your profits, increase your efficiency, blah, 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 blah. Would you like to learn more? Watch this presentation. Sign in Boom. to see a 15-minute demo with your name and email. And now yep. the funnel has begun. Yep. One direct path, solving one problem, speaking to the pain that most likely many doctors are experiencing. There is your information offer. Versus Absolutely. we sell software to medical practices to help them become more organized. You should buy our software. Here's our website with 9,000 things on the site map. That's how most are playing the game. And they're out there getting VC funding and this funding and that funding and raising money from friends and family. And it's like, at some point, you need to learn how to sell and learn how to lead with proper direct response information-based marketing. And you won't, you won't keep running up against this lack of deal flow, which is really all it comes down to. Well, and this doctor is in for something like, 1.5 million dollars trying into to get the, this the software development into marketing and development and biz dev really? and he came to me and said i i don't know what to do the and i said perfect well, example he's doing I exactly said, I what do. i just said aaron he's 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 just throwing money at it but there's no real clear path to direct response yeah and, and after we we built everything for him and we launched and we were 45 days in yeah he said you've done more for me in 45 days than i've been able to accomplish with six different teams i've worked with over the last five years for because of everything we've talked about in 15 yep. minutes because yep. you built by the way what did you build for him so what i'm curious what was the offer for the i software? built a i built a, with the same messaging that we were just talking right. about I, I built a landing page with an opt-in to a vsl strategy session to an application to a calendar page to but a what was selling with the strategy session so where's the information in the hook in the middle there that it gets... was it was a it was a video sales letter that runs about 20 minutes long so, so a demo yep there we go there it is yeah, and, and a demo reinforced with a little bit more information about him because he's a brain surgeon, of right? Course, so he's like, I've course. worked in the hospitals forever. Here's what I, know I found the challenges out. That you're facing. Uh, yeah. I've you uncovered know, something. I saw the opportunity in the space. Yeah. I wanted to do. I want to take this worldwide. I want to help people in other countries who don't have access to medical records. You know, blah 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 blah. So I've developed this. Let me show you how it works Perfect. and how it's going to impact your business and yada yada yada. Perfect. He'll have doctors opting in. Already doing all day long. He'll have a list being built. Already right? doing so. The underlying, of course, the under. I mean, listen, you drive all of our traffic too. I, I, I <laughs> didn't expect it not to work, right? Um, <laughs> so I, I here's what he's going to have. Also, he's going to have a list. Mm -hmm. Think about the list building that's happening. So the other underlying benefit of an information offer is a lot of people won't do anything with your information right now. In fact, probably ninety percent. But guess yep. what? Guess where the ninety percent are? 
sitting they're in your inside list. your CRM on a list that you can email and text and in some cases physically mail them and stay in front of them with case studies and webinars and weekly e-newsletters. And you're never going to build a business without building a list. You're never well, going to build a sales machine without having an information offer. So if you walk away with nothing else today, it's I need to build an information offer, even if simply for the reason of being able to use it to build my list. Ultimately, though, I want to refine my offer to acquire clients, but the list building piece is enormous. Well, and if I look at our clients right now, just to reinforce your point, about once a quarter, we will do a lot like a live virtual event. You know, you could call it a webinar, you can call it whatever you want, but it's live and we do it once a quarter. And the only people that we send to it are the people that were on the email list that didn't oh move God. forward to book an appointment or buy the thing. So any unconverted prospects get Correct. invited to some sort of a webinar, preview, seminar, virtual right. thing, whatever. So, so I'll give you an example of a, a real life one. So we have a, an author. He's the foremost expert in investing in commercial real estate. He's written a book, you know, the, the books for dummies. He's, he's written a book called, you know, commercial real estate investing for dummies. He's part of the dummy series. His Is name's he really? Peter. Yeah. He's, his name's Peter. And once a, once a quarter, we say, Hey, we're doing this live virtual intensive. It's going to be 90 minutes long and it's going to, sh and we're going to show you what's working in the world of investing in commercial real estate today, where the opportunities are, the best states to do it right now, the best places to raise capital if you need capital, so on and so forth. And we, and we do a one week email launch to this live intensive. And he goes through everything for 60 to 90 minutes. And then he says, hey, if you wanna come into our program and learn how to do it and work with me or maybe invest with me directly and we'll partner on some properties, book a call over here. Every quarter we generate about 400,000 rev in revenue in one day from this one webinar. Off people that didn't move forward before because they were busy or they were distracted or whatever. But imagine if we didn't have that list. A million six a year in his pocket with really no advertising costs because we're just emailing the list, right? A million six that he's just picking up once a quarter. Once a quarter, he shows up for an hour and he picks up 400,000. Could not do it without the list. Couldn't do it. There's no there's no money with no list. There's no event every quarter with no list, but because he took the time to list build mm -hmm. via information, and there's also no list building without information, right? So it's it's they're hand in hand. Correct. They're not building a list without info because nobody's going to sign into something that doesn't give them value. They need information, they need a book, they need a report, they need a webinar, they need they need a demo. So the information leads to the list, the lead list to the, the leads, the leads lead to the events, the events lead to more money. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a perpetual cycle. It's so powerful when you wrap your head around it. It, it, it. Dan Kennedy said years ago, I never forgot this. He said, every business needs to be an information based business. Every business. It, at least it, needs and, to and it gets better, Aaron. And he would say, and, and, the, and the real pivot, when you, when you really understand you're not a lawyer, you're not a doctor, you're not a coach, you're a marketer of legal services, you're a marketer yes. of medical services, you're a marketer of fitness services. When you wrap your head around the fact that you're, you're a marketer of the service, not the thing, the, the lawyer, the doctor, the coach you're a marketer of those services, then you start to have this paradigm shift where everything gets looked at from the scope of information, education, value, direct response. And that's when you really pivot and make big breakouts in the business. It's really difficult to scale the business with no information and no list building. You just have, you have a, a real leaky bucket there. Well, and I think that you make an important point there, which is that it doesn't really matter what product or service you're offering. Doesn't matter. You're competing against a zillion other people in that space. So yes, you may have a great product. Yes, you may have a great service, so on and so forth. But if you're not a great marketer of that product or service, you're dead. Dead. I mean, if you watch the show for no, no other reason, it's because we continue to keep coming back to these fundamentals. You'll notice a theme if you go back and watch 120 plus episodes. I don't even, but probably 130 now, Aaron, by the way. Great. You'll go back and see this underlying theme continue to come back, which is information, value, lead generation, right? Just having, slowing down the sales process, 
taken the time to educate, inform, provide value, provide third-party validation, share case studies and testimonials. These are things that cause less friction and ultimately help you sell more with less resistance. It's, I mean, we did a, a couple of weeks back, we did our, our book review episode. If you remember, Aaron, the, the ultimate yep. sales machine. That, I don't, it's two or three episodes back. If you go to salesvelocitytv.com, look for the book review on the ultimate sales machine. I keep coming back to that book because it's the Bible of education-based marketing. It is the Bible of education-based marketing, and it will give you examples of how to create that front-end information flagship offer, I call it, that just keeps leads perpetually cycling and recycling, cycling and recycling all day long. Let's talk about a couple examples. Aaron, is there anyone right now, you and I pay attention to a lot in finance, in health, in fitness, in economics. Is there anybody, TV, radio, or internet, that you can think of right now that you were like, wow, that was a strong information offer? Like compelling, can't believe they just did that. That was brilliant. I want to try to give a couple examples before we wrap it up. Well, I think That's what you're asking for is an example of somebody mainstream that people might know or that, anything you saw that isn't mainstream. If there's any, well, I mean, I can just, I can just look at my own clients for of example. Of course you could. Who's, right. Who, so which is the one that jumps out at you now? And, and did you create it or did they already bring it to the table and maybe you refined it? Well, let's, let's, let's look at an example that of somebody that people might know. So okay. we have a client, her name is Bethany Hamilton. She was in a movie called soul surfer. Um, oh, tell me about her. She had her arm bit off by a shark when she was surfing as a little kid in Hawaii. Jeez. And she went on to become one of the world's best surfers with one arm. And this was the movie Soul Surfer was, was built around. And when she came to us a few years ago, she's still a client now, she wanted to she wanted to monetize her fame, right? So how she was monetizing her fame was she was – doing speaking events, which she's very good at and does lots of those, um, some sponsorship deals, um, obviously whatever she was getting from the movie, you know, so on and so forth. But she's like, how do I, how do I take my, my knowledge to the next level? Like my, that my, my business from my experience, to the next level and my, and, and my, you know, my fan, she's got millions of followers on each channel. Mm -hmm. And so when she showed up to me, she basically had it one page with like six courses on it how to overcome obstacles, how to reconnect with God, this, that, whatever. And it was just, she, when she'd stuff, go to an stuff event. Was, stuff was everywhere? Yeah, like when she would go to an event, she'd be like, oh, I have some courses if you, you know, want to check them out or if she was interviewed on a podcast or whatever. Like no, no predictability, no structure, mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so what we actually But a did, lot of good content, it sounds like, which is Yeah, there was, there was but, content and there was value there, but there was no... There was no information. There was no lead. No lead there was no fear. no organization no. of the information. I, I no said. right. And right. so basically, I said, well, if I was gonna, you know, gonna respond to you, I think overcoming obstacles would probably be the the thing that I would resonate most because sure. you had your arm bit off by a shark and you went on to become a professional surfer. So what we did is we actually built a, a whole campaign around have things happen in your life that are traumatic and they've set you back and you don't know how to overcome and so on and so forth. Let us show you, you know, the three things that we put that, that she put in place to overcome the, 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 the mental trauma of having her arm bit off by the shark. And, and we put together a landing page where they opted in to watch, you know, her presentation on how to do this. And then she had a presentation on it. And then we sold the course at the end of the presentation. If people wanted to dig deeper on it, and then ultimately we developed um, a, a value ladder. So basically every time we would give information, we would, we would ask ourselves, where's the person at now in their journey? Now let's develop more information that speaks to that and then creates a new product line and a new product line, a new product line. And now her top tier product line, which all stems from the very beginning and climbs all the way to the top, is she actually has a, a 90 day um, or 60 day coaching program with mothers and daughters, helping them reconnect and bond with themselves and bond with God. And they end up at in Hawaii for three days surfing with Bethany. Hmm. And when I say, so how do I don't want to give away details. So from, I had six courses doing nothing ish to 
now a hundred X times the revenue in two years because she had the product, she had the service, she had the credibility, but she didn't have the structure to attract attention, build credibility, move people through a process. And I think a lot of the people that are on, that listen to the show or they watch the show, they're like, I have a great product, I have a great service, I think I could really impact people with this. They're in the same space. And, and, if, you're, and if you're feeling bad about yourself, think, do you have a movie made about you? Do people pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to speak on a stage? Do, do, do you have a million, two million followers on your social? Probably not. But that same person who has all those things also couldn't monetize that because they didn't have the structure that we're talking about right now. So if she can't do it, how are you supposed to do it, right? It's, it's the great leveling of the playing field, you know, that, that we're talking about right now. If you're a financial planner, there's a million banks and a million huge financial corporations. How do you compete with them when they've got all this stuff? Well, you do what we're talking about here so that you stand out from the generic basic marketing strategies that they use. They're not in the, they're not in the, the world of converting people when they get to that level. They're in the world of keeping their name out in front of people as often as possible. They're playing the branding eyeballs awareness game because they're established. You, you can't compete with them doing that type of marketing. You have to compete with them giving value away and cutting through the noise to get to your people. Well said, well said. And, and you need to do it via a mechanism, such as a yes. webinar, such as a demo, such as a video. What, what we see working the best today is some sort of mini presentation that looks like a webinar, Aaron, a fi like you said, a 15, 20 minute video. Video is great because people can listen, they can hear, they can see, it's not just text, but yet you could take the whole thing and transcribe it and have a PDF version of it as well and serve anybody however they like to consume information. So you can have, a really strong multimedia offer today. And you have to think about doing that. So takeaway would be, so getting clear on what it is that you offer and then how do you package that, right? How do you, how do you create a script and a slide deck and a, or a webinar or a cheat sheet or a free report? Probably not alone. You'll probably have to bring in some help. You'll probably have to do some copywriting or hire copywriters to get it right, graphic designers. You and I talked a little bit about the AI tools that are available today, which will probably, that'll be a future topic in weeks ahead. I have a, I have a, a love hate mm -hmm. with anything that becomes a religion early on, like this AI thing is. Anytime I see something on every single commercial with no proof of concept and everybody saying it's the greatest, latest, best thing ever to hit the planet and all of a sudden they invalidate everything else and there's no proof of concept. I'm like, oh, I'm going the other way, right? But there's some, some elements to it with helping of the writing and giving ideas Sure. Being able to move a little bit quicker if you're having trouble come up, coming up with ideas. There's been some really good feedback from the chat GPT T's of the world with people writing emails or coming up with outlines or just needing a little bit of help with looking at a blank white screen and having the, the thing spit out some information for you. But it's going to well, be a slippery it, it, slope. You and I will talk about some of the things that are being said by the, the you know, the ex Google chiefs and, and even Elon Musk, who's probably the biggest investor and, and proponent of AI. They're even concerned about just just the ability again for me, the ability for surveillance and the ability to reshape thought. So we'll, we'll leave that we'll, for a different we'll leave it show. for a different show. I, I think it's really important when people hear us talking about this, though, is to really understand the value, because if you can craft the right message. Yep the right ad campaign, take some time to figure out really who is your ideal audience. Are they male? Are they female? How old are they? Where do they live? What are the things that are keeping them up at night? What are the conversations that are happening in their head? And you can create a presentation that shows them that you're the one that can solve this problem. And then you can get them into your ecosystem where either they can buy from you right away or talk to you right away or stay in a list and be educated and nurtured and come back later when they're ready and you can make this all work in a predictable fashion, what you've actually created is a real world money machine. Uh, like I said, a flagship offer that can run 24 seven while you're doing other things. 
Absolutely. And, and, and the term that you use flagship offer is great. It makes sense to me. But sometimes when people are like, oh, I don't want to do the work to create that, or I don't want to pay somebody to create that, or it seems so overwhelming, I'm just going to stick with doing what I'm doing. They don't understand that you are creating a money machine. An asset. How many money machines are there on this planet that run 24 seven that you're aware of? Like I'm trying to think of examples in my head right now. Like I'm thinking maybe vending machines, but then you gotta go buy a bunch of vending machines. You gotta put them all over the place. You gotta refill them with stuff. Like I'm trying to think of- I, uh, I've, I've often over the years, Aaron, used the analogy of this is like building an oil well. When, know, you, when you build a good, solid, sound information, education-based offer delivered via a, a sales funnel, you have built an oil well that is an asset that can continue to gush capital for a long time. And then you can add another well and another well, but you've got to get the first well built before you can even think about a second or a third or a different vertical. I just think that other than your health and your family what is there that's more valuable on earth than taking the time to develop something where you predictably know that money is going to come in every single month I, I, it, exactly I, I, what, what else are you going to do i mean i mean shut down for a day or two and really get clear on this and and, and shut off all notifications and and all the reactiveness and, and and come up with an outline and do this we have this new thing we're doing now aaron where my private coaching group that I meet with in Miami that you know about once a month, my mastermind group, six, seven guys. Uh, many of them have been with me for 10, 12 plus years. One of the things we started doing that I've pushed and I, of course, lead by example as well is we've been taking one day a week or a half day, if this is hard at first, and legitimately disconnecting from all internet, team, company, Slack, social, in working on the high revenue producing creative focus work that you know you need to do, this is one of them, that you know you need to do, that you keep putting off because we all procrastinate by nature. You get too busy, you get pulled into too many different directions. There is a day that that's not allowed to happen. And that day has been Thursday. I check in with them. For some, it's tough to adopt. So maybe it's nine to 12 just to get the muscle and the habit built. And then eventually becomes nine to two. And then eventually, hey, I'm not available from nine to five all day today. This is a pre-internet day for me. Don't even bother. I'll check my emails and my messages and my team issues and my drama at 6 p.m. Everything will be right there waiting, elegantly organized, neat right there for me. No drama, no 911. You will get more done in six hours than most people get done in six weeks, six days, whatever, right? So you're going to have, because of the distractions today, you're going to have to box yourself into some sort of a, of an, and by the way, you can't be in your office. This is the key. You can't have that focus day, Aaron, in the day-to-day office you normally work in or the whole thing's a failure. You, it's have, tough, you have to leave. You have to leave. Yeah. I, go, I go rent a conference. I did it yesterday. I rented a conference room for six hours yesterday downtown. It's an office where I can, you know about the office. It's mm-hmm. a virtual space, meetings, podcast rooms, conference rooms. I'll go pay the $40 an hour. I'll go do six hours. I don't care if it's, what, six times four? I don't care if it costs me a few hundred bucks to have that space for the day. Because I edited three video sales letters and rewrote two sales pages in four hours yesterday. What's that value going to bring back? What is that value going to bring? That's insane. Now, by the way, everybody on my team knew, don't bother me. I'm working on this whole new offer today. Don't even try. I'm not responding. There's nothing 911. Here are the managers you need to go to. Everybody's trained. Um, Expectations are set. And I'm boxed in. No internet. No Well, internet, yeah, of course. No social. No Slack. You get the point. Text. Phones across the room. Not here, over there. This, this is something you have to be deliberate and, and, and very intentional about. And even if you just, it's like working out. You're never going to start by doing this six days a week. Just get the one day win in. Get that habit moving consistently. And then maybe one day becomes two or a half day becomes a full. But boy, oh boy, to get this kind of work done that we're talking about, you're going to need to really think about productivity and efficiency and in, in behavior to, to pull it off. We could probably do a whole show on what I just talked about. I think we should actually. And we probably should. And then in the, we got a, a long, I'm looking at my list over here, a long list of things we're going to be talking about on, on the show. There's some cra- crazy things happening that are going to be on the show. A couple topics. AI is a topic. Um, we talked about the breakdowns we're seeing in traditional education. We're talking about marketing and business education. You made up a, you made a great point the other day or today on 
some of the breakdowns we're seeing with traditional education that we want to talk about, the selling of, of, of that whole charade in some of these school systems across mainly North America, but I don't know if you're seeing it down where you are isolated. Oh, we're seeing it here too. Yeah, and then, and then from there, folks, we're, we're even going to be doing maybe a little rebrand of the show where we're going to be potentially changing the name and the theme and the concept of the show here in the months and definitely in 2023 ahead where we're probably going to go a little bit more broad, um, not just sales, but more business, economics, um, personal development, current events, money, current events, a little bit of politics. I mean, there's so much going on and it's all intertwined. And it looks like we're going to be pivoting here to a, a much more, you know, broad, diverse topic portfolio, almost like a Joe Rogan experience type show. He just keeps going, man. The, the, the content and the guests are just awesome. Lights out on and on and on and on again. But that's the experience I think we're going to be we're going to be pivoting towards here. But back to the to the topic of the day. Information will set you free. Education based offers win every time. And the answer is both. You still need a corporate website. You still need to have that information, rich social media presence and whatnot. But to get the lead flow you need to scale, you're going to need to have a core flagship direct response offer that is information based, that educates, informs, solves a problem, and then moves people to the next level. And it's not easy to do, but it, it's, it's relatively simple, the strategy. But it will take some work and some thought and some sitting down and maybe working with some professionals to get it done. It's usually always the case, Aaron, at the end of the day, right? Whether it's physical fitness or financial planning, rarely will you pull it all off on an island. Yeah, or, or at least you probably won't do it well. Or at least you won't do it well. But hey, listen, I'd rather motion than no motion. At least Absolutely. get it moving, get it going, get something done. Um Instead of looking at a blank screen and going, man, I wish I could do that, do it. Just do something, right? It, you can easily refine what's already in motion, but uh, don't go too long without having this flagship offer. Don't don't let your company begin and end with referrals and a corporate website. It'll be it'll be a really slow, frustrating process. Anyways, that's all I've got, Aaron. Anything to wrap up from you before we uh, dig into next week? We got a couple of good ones in the weeks ahead here. No, I think there was a lot of information here that if people went back and listened to it again, it could really inspire them and some, you know, some ideas and some strategies might start to really percolate in your mind. It's one of those things where I think when I hear somebody say something and I just know it's true, it kind of just sets off a feeling inside of my stomach. Mm -hmm. And, and then I know I have to do it. I have to carve out the time to do it because I just know it's true. And, and I hope that that's what happens with some of these episodes with people is they just go, I know what they're saying is true. I just, I need to go and do it now. Yeah. And I think the other thing too, is go out and, and dig around, go, go be a, go be a, a researcher, not just somebody who's on social or on the internet, allowing your mind to get taken in a million different directions. Go be intentional, go look for some really solid information offers, the free report offers, the who's running a, a successful webinar. You see the ads over and over and over and over again. It must be working. Who's running a successful survey funnel? Who's running a successful free report or a cheat sheet funnel? I mean, there's there's so many good marketers on social media. If you look at that Facebook and Instagram feed, Aaron, I look at the feed sometimes. I don't really look at the feed all that much because it's usually just a lot of drama. But I look at the feed because I find some really good direct response offers in that feed a oh, yeah. lot. I mean, we live in Facebook and Instagram as advertisers, but you can also go in, the, go in there from the perspective of not being entertained and getting bounced in a million directions mentally, but go in there looking for people who, are, who catch your attention because they've marketed something that is of huge value that solves a problem. And you can go hack that offer. You could say, hey, what, how can we adapt this to our company? Mm -hmm. You don't have to go look at a blank slate. Most likely somebody's already doing what you need to do. Agreed. So that would be my, my final lesson here. We will see you all in the next episode. We have some great ones in the week ahead, deviating off the sales topic here a little bit. So stay tuned. All episodes at salesvelocitytv.com. I'm Andrew. That's Aaron. We'll see you in the next one. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Sales Velocity TV is powered by Pipeline Pro, the ultimate all-in-one sales pipeline management and marketing automation platform that makes all others obsolete. And we can prove it. Take a tour at gopipelinepro.com. See you on the next episode.